The lecture capture is really just a different way of giving the lecture. It's still me. I still, I've taught it long enough to be able to anticipate questions and even will bring that up in my video recording. Anatomy of bone. So I kind of just use it as a way of extending the classroom and um, incorporating them, telling them to look up some particular thing in their book and watch this video and then come in and we'll discuss it. In many ways it makes them a little more willing to ask questions if it's a video capture versus something where I'm sitting there and explaining it and they may think I'm the only one that doesn't know what she's talking about. The ends of each of these areas, the epiphysis, the epiphysis that's closest. Um, I think it also allows the, the students to ex kind of interact with each other. Did you understand that? Yes, this is what she was saying. Um, it allows me to be able to add to that. So it may be a particular concept that may be a little more difficult to understand. Look at it there and then I can actually almost re-lecture on it, but come from a different perspective and explain it a little differently. And um, I think that's a benefit in this for all my classes, even those that are primarily face-to-face. -face. Of my six modules, I do at least one live lecture and the rest of the lectures are done as video captures, such as Camtasia. If I, for some reason, cannot be there, I would just let students know ahead of time I won't be in. The lecture is online and they can go online and the course continues on without any kind of break. In the person may be working full time, so they still have the ability to get to those lectures that are video recorded, uh, either through Camtasia or through the Collaborate recording. Sometimes I use it if it's a topic that I want them to be able to go back and re-listen to, or it's maybe uh, more complex. And in a large lecture hall, I wouldn't get the questions that I might expect. So this allows them to go stop the recording, check their notes, see how they're doing, and then continue on. In some cases, if it's a full 45 minute lecture, when I display that, I will give them time at certain points where they either could fast forward it or they could skip to certain parts or skip over certain parts if they'd like to. They would need them for reviewing for a test because they're going to see images, not three-dimensional images, but images of bones that they have to identify um, or regions of the heart. I can now come down and everything I do is now going to be done here. And now I can manipulate this how I would manipulate any other structure. If it was a skull in my classroom, I'd be able to hold it up and rotate it so I can actually rotate it around. I can look at it underneath. It allows me to take and highlight bones. I can talk about the bone. I can use my cursor to point things out if I want to. Um, and I can uh, make choices with this program. I can choose to either highlight it or I can choose to get rid of everything else. So I'm just looking in this case at the mandible and pointing out structures of the mandible. So you can see it gives me a great deal of three-dimensional quality to it and it allows me to have have more of a, an ability to be able to point things out. It's not the same as holding a bone and actually having it with you, but at least it gives them that opportunity to see it in a three-dimensional quality rather than a picture of it.